Hey, let's talk to Nazair Cursebreaker. Sid, I was wondering if you could help me. Sure. What do you need help with? with? Avera, <laughs> depends. Uh, recently freed from his bonds, is keen to join the Cursebreakers. Oh. As you know, the work we do is not easy, which is why we test every volunteer's suitability. I was hoping you could oversee this one's evaluation. Okay. I don't mind, but why this one? Yeah, why, why Clive? he wants to be a scout. Like that? Our ranks are filled with men and women capable of breaking chains and putting slavers to the sword. But scouting, we're few with the nose for that, which is why we still rely so heavily on Gav. Right. And since he accompanies you on so many of your missions, I thought you might be better placed to recognize the traits in him that we should look for in those who'd fill his boots. Ah. Oh. Sounds reasonable. Yeah. So you're happy to oversee that the makes, boys' test, then? <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, my time is yours. One can never have too many scouts. True, True. words, Sid. I'll let the initiate know that you'll be attending his trial, and that he is to proceed directly to Northreach in readiness. Oh, we're going to Northreach. No time like the present, eh? No time like the present. I'll await you there. So I'm going to be doing these quests one at a time. Northreach. I don't suppose they could have chosen somewhere closer. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, why Northreach? I mean, I don't mind, but like, it's pretty, it's kind of far. Clive. Oh, ask about origin. Here to say your goodbyes, are you? For now, then. For now. But you'd better come back, or I'll fly up there and drag you home by your ear. Thank you, Karen. Didn't think you'd find the thought appealing. <sighs> Look, just don't... Just don't die, all right? Changing leadership's bad for business. Aye, you're off to kill a god, so what? You've done everything else you've put your mind to, haven't you? You could do this too. Nazair might at least have mentioned where in Northridge he'd be testing this recruit. <laughs> right there. I'm nervous. Is it all right to be nervous? <laughs> I don't care either way. So long as you do as I tell you. Well met, Sid. Well met. This is the initiate. Ember, present yourself. Oh, his name is Ember. At your service, master. Please, just Sid. There are no masters here. Your life is your own. Oh, of course. Thank you, Sid. <laughs> the sergeant <laughs> He's says you'll be evaluating me at my trial. To become a scout, yes. You are aware of the dangers inherent in that role. I am. But I swore I'd face them. Just like the man who saved my life. Was it Gav? Who would that be? Gav! Of course. It was him who found me and freed me. Aww. No magic, no support, just one man and his nose came and sniffed me out. It taught me what one man can do if he puts his mind to it. And I've Gav's been training ever character. since so that one day I can be someone's savior, just like Gav was mine. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be flattered. You clearly have good intentions, Ember. And it sounds like you're under no illusions. Stick to this path and you'll make a fine curse breaker. So, what? Have I passed? <laughs> it hasn't started yet. You haven't even started yet. Now listen. Oh, Not we're far going from up here there. is an Imperial lookout, Eastwatch. I've been w wondering what's The guards what's there record all their sightings there. in a logbook. You are to find it and bring it here. And bring it here, right. Anything else? No. Sneaking into a heavily guarded Imperial outpost and stealing the logbook would be quite sufficient. You'll need to assess the situation, determine a point of entry, create a distraction and effect an escape, all without being discovered and thrown into an Imperial oubliette. Ember, Gav isn't our best scout because he can do everything. It's essential that you know your limits. Yeah. Know my limits, right. <laughs> I won't let you down. Ember, I'm hoping he doesn't die. It shouldn't be as dangerous as I made out. But keep a weather eye on him all the same, would you? On my way. All right, Ember. Impress me. Impress me. Even now, the capital has moved. The Empire keeps the watchtowers overlooking royal meadows and the Sea of Grace manned. But only by a skeleton crew. It's a trial, not a death sentence. Perhaps young Ember really is ready. Oh. Clean kills. Ah! Uh oh. Or maybe not. Ember. Uh-oh. Damn it. 
Ember, draw your sword! Oh, God! Oh, no. Then run! Uh, um. If you want him, you'll have to go through me. Hey, Bingo! Scouts really are a rare breed. <sighs> back to Northreach it is then. Uh-oh. I didn't expect you back so soon. Where is Ember? How did he fare? He ran. I thought I'd find him with you. He must have fled. <sighs> I followed him to Eastwatch, where I found him being set upon by a wild Avis. He was just standing there. Didn't even draw his sword. I had to step in and take care of things. By the time I had, he was nowhere to be seen. I assumed he'd set off in your direction, but apparently not. Oh, I'm Damn. sorry, Sid. I knew the boy had a nervous streak, but he seemed like the right man for the job. Oh? I believe this is the logbook you tasked me with retrieving. Okay. <laughs> How did you... Don't I had a you feeling. tell me you breached the tower while Sid was busy saving your skin? What? Wasn't that what you asked me to do? <laughs> to bring the thing back without getting caught? He has you then, is there? And he did it all on his own. But Sid, he... He did what he thought was best. And now I have to decide whether I agree. Of course. We'll await your evaluation back at the hideaway. Don't you leave my sight. Yes, Sergeant. <laughs> he really used Sid. The audacity. This won't be an easy decision. You should have seen him. The thing didn't stand a chance. Yeah, neither did you, I hear. <laughs> Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Ember's yeah. so excited. Welcome back. Trip wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I hope. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. But from what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. <laughs> no, they most certainly did not. Does Ember deserve passing marks? I get to decide? I want to say yes, but he might get himself killed. What if I wasn't there? He could have gotten himself killed. I feel like he could use some work. He got it done, but he did get discovered, though. So I'm going to say no. When faced with an unexpected foe, Ember froze. He did not run. He did not fight. Had I not been there, he would be dead. It would be too great a risk to send him out on a mission alone. Thank you, Sid, for your honest appraisal. Ember, you braved the tower and emerged unscathed. Yes, but only because Sid saved your skin. To me... That's no better than being caught red-handed. You failed the test. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. 
That sounds yeah, to a second he needs chance. A, yeah, he needs a check, second chance. After all, he did do as you asked. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade, and any mind can conquer its fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that log, young Ember here has shown he has a conk and a half. <laughs> Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Aww. Fine. One more chance. <laughs> I like how Ember's I'll like do smiling. Whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. Yeah. I'll show you. Just you wait. Yeah, gotta defend yourself, bruh. Daft as a brush, that one. But his heart's in the right place. <laughs> Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, we've been leaning on him for far too long. Yeah, Gav that needs a break. Has took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. Good night. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will ya? I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a day off. Aww. <sighs> Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. This did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things really do these days. True. But that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. Aw. I, I will sit. Aw. Sit Thank teaching. You. Clive's teaching. Sid, I wanted you to know. I will be taking personal responsibility for Ember's combat training. And I will not let you down. Thanks, Zazair. What do you think happened to Miss Middadol? I heard she was kicked out of the university. I mean, I don't think there's our university anymore. Sid, you have to help us. What's going on? With what? You didn't take apart another of Mid's contraptions, did you? <laughs> no. Well, yes. But that's not what we want to talk to you about. It's Miss Middadol. She's been acting strange. Very strange. She's barely ever around. When she is, she acts like we aren't even there. Her head's in a crowd. In the clouds. And that's what I said. In the clouds. You said crowds. Well, she does have a lot on her mind. When did you last see her? Um, not long ago. Ah, right after she got back from saving you from Stone Ear. Then it's probably just about the Enterprise. It did take quite a battering on the way there and back. You didn't break it, did you, Sid? You really should be more careful around Miss Middle's <laughs> inventions. Oh, don't listen to her. Even if you did break the Enterprise, you could put it back together, couldn't you? But who's going to put Miss Middadol back together? She seems really sad. Oh? I'm a little worried about Mid myself. Why don't I go and see if I can cheer her up? You do that for us. Ah, oh, these ninja ears. Don't scare him. It's not a real dungeon. But she calls it her dungeon. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> If you have a... Ah! That's it! I knew it! The answer was right here under my arse all along! If this doesn't see it to the skies, nothing will! To the skies? You aren't trying to give the Enterprise wings, are you? What else would I be doing? The children seem to think you're avoiding them. They're worried about you. Is this really so important that you need to shut yourself away from everyone? Yes. The Enterprise is already the fastest ship in the realm. And that's with the sea beneath her. But what if she weren't bound to the waves? What if she weren't bound to anything at all? It's not fair. The gods get the skies all to themselves, so... I'm gonna do something about it. Let's go. The Fallen had their chance, but they relied too much on magic. And see where that got them. But not me. I've discovered how to do it without. Well, almost. First, I need to make a prototype. And is that a one-woman job? <laughs> Probably not. I'll have you know the Enterprise is my baby. But if her godfather's offering to lend a hand... Her godfather! to take it. Godfather! Since he <laughs> claims the godfather... First, I need oil. And not just some old drippings from Miss Molly's spits in the tub and crown. Refined stuff, like they make in Ordil. Then I'll need some bone, or shell. Light, strong, preferably no longer attached to the beast it belongs to. <laughs> if it's beast bones you're after... I'm sure the curse breakers will know where you might find some. No, they'll know where you might find some. You're the one who offered to help, remember? Damn. 
I should speak with one of the curse breakers before I set off for Old Hill. See if I can't find this bone while I'm there as well. They make an oil down at the docks in Old Hill that's as slippery as the sea nasties they render it from. With that and the bone I told you about, I shall be able to finish the prototype. How can I help you, Clive? And no sooner have your wounds mended, then you find an excuse to go charging once more onto the breach. But only because my wounds are mended. Thanks to the expert ministrations of the best healer this side of the belt. <sighs> Save your honeyed words, honeyed tongue, for, for Jill. You're talking about killing a god, Clive. While I may not have Gav's nose. I know danger when I smell it, and this plan reeks to high heaven. This will be the last time, I promise. That is not a good promise to make. That's what I'm worried about. You fool. Don't you think I'd rather stitch a thousand of your cuts than never stitch one again? I do. Thank you. What I truly like is to share my knowledge of healing in herb herblore with the realm. Every cure seems like a miracle to the child who knows nothing of medicine. But teach her medicine. And suddenly a world without m miracles doesn't seem so frightening. Don't push yourself too hard, Clive. Thank you, my lord, for taking me in. Everyone here has been so kind. It reminds me of home. Greetings, Lord Marquis. Ask about Joshua. His grace and I. Often spoke on our travels. A certain saying of his remains with me even now. Duty is the enemy of freedom. At first. I thought that he spoke of his own plight. That though he was able to roam the land again, his duty to unearth the truth about Ultima prevented him from being truly free. But I came to understand that he spoke not of himself, but of it me. It was my duty to him. That his grace judged to be inimical to my, in to my own freedom. I believe that this is why he bade me remain here, that I might at last be released from my duty to him. <sighs> Few others in his position would allow the cares of a humble attendant to weigh so heavily upon them, nor take such drastic action in response. My lord. You're resolved to go, then? I am. And so is Joshua. I know you fear for him, but I'll do everything in my power to keep him safe. I do not doubt it. You are, as you have always been, his first shield. I was only ever his temporary protector. Now his grace has bade me protect the hideaway instead. And that is what I shall do. Thank you, Yote. May you return safely. My lord. Both of you. May the Firebird's flame burn ever in your heart. All right, Sid. Come to buy us a round, have you? Only if you earn it. <laughs> Mid needs a piece of light but durable bone for her next project. You've encountered your share of beasts on your travels across the realm. Any ideas? Most bones are the same. Whack them hard enough and they'll break. If it's durability you're looking for, shell will serve you better. You know what an adamantus is? Oh no, not I the do. adamantus. I don't know to give them a wide berth. Will any old adamantus do? Well, with shells... The older, the harder. There's a rumor of an ancient Adamantus down in Carava, near old Bidza, or what's left of the village anyway. Oh. But don't expect to make quick work of the bastard. Thanks, There's a Bingo. reason it's lived as long as it has. I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Normally, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere near an Adamantus, let alone one that's had a few centuries to let its temper simmer. They're mean bastards, and they only get meaner with age. Why do you think the village of Old Bidza was abandoned? Oh. I read Gav's report on Stonia. <laughs> Only wish I could have been there to see the Mother Crystal fall. It's just a shame it wasn't the last. Assuming that thing looming over the mountains is a Mother Crystal. It's probably a ship. Here we are again. Carava. If you were a tortoise, Torgor, where would you hide? Literally right there, Clive. Literally right there. Like we found it. Wow. I hate when I accidentally do that, man. Why 
why would you hide? Adamantois shell. It is believed an adamantois will grow a thin new layer of its protective shell once every two moons. Considering that many of the creatures live for hundreds of years, it should come as no surprise that the shells of older specimens can be several hands thick and weigh over 50 stone. If Mid needs another, she can come and get it herself. <laughs> Clive. Oh. Retrieve oil. It's nice. Oil. After what happened here, it's a miracle there was any left at all. Yeah, I was gonna say. So nothing's really changed in this area. I better get these materials to Mid so she can finish her prototype. Mid, tell me this is all you need. <laughs> A thick, noisome lubricant made from the rendered fat of sea beasts, commonly used by shipwrights on the cranes and winches they employ in shipbuilding. Ah, oh, you make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell I mean, me, this is all you need. It's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one. And a zero. <sighs> and... <laughs> a cogwheel. Just a tiny one. Though, that's the problem. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Oh, Wait. that's what the kids have! The children. When they took apart your scales, it was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I... They didn't use it when we put the scales back together. The young uns? But why would the... You know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. Sid! Is Mid still hiding from us? She's just busy. She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I... Bet it's an airship. <laughs> You're on the right track, kid. Help. That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear, a tiny one, one that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot. We remember. <laughs> you saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. The bag of bits. It's always in the back Since of bits. Lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. Oh, he can actually say All the words the pieces now. that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. That's good to know. Oh, no. Look. I found it. Cheeky buggers, right? Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid they needs disassemble, them. then reassemble, now. and then keep the leftovers. So there's Ford. stuff. Just in case. Thanks, Sid. That don't go back into the sus. The sus. That's so sus. Back for another part. We've got this screws and bolts and nails and nobbles and noodles and um. 
Yeah, fine. This is fine. When you return, would you mind teaching the children another lesson? They did so enjoy your last. Well, <clears throat> did they have it? Brass cogwheel, an overlooked component of Mid's deconstructed scales. Its purpose remains a mystery to all but Mid. They did. And they kept it somewhere nice and safe. Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own, but with the right cog in the right place? Well, you just wait and see. They're replaced with better parts. <gasps> are they making? That should do it. If they deem this the Lind Lindblum. Oh my gosh, look at it! Here goes nothing. Ah, oh, so close. Titan's tits. It wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. Honestly, these bloody engines are driving me mad. I was so sure this would be the day she saw. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Oh. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes, children, their mums, and their dads. Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head? Or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, I felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. Aww. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. Wow. But all that hard work. All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive, have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one. So that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. Wow. <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Uh, right. Yo, that's cool. Of course, if I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. Hmm. My dad always said, dream big. But it in the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do. Wow. Interesting. It's an interesting approach. I'm a little surprised. Model airship.
Mid's dangerous dream of flight immortalized in miniature. In a mini- miniature. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing your dream or shuffling to your grave. What shall I do with your model? You spent a lot of time on it. We both did. What, that old thing? Not healthy to cling to your failures, Clive. But weigh you down, you know. Sound advice. Still, I suppose my prototypes will probably be worth a fair bit when I'm as famous as Bart's the Builder. Bart's? Seeing as you're always strapped for coin, suppose I can give it to you. Just make sure you get a good price when you do come to part with it. I'd say that was up to you as much as me. Bart's the Builder. Oh, there's just one. Oh, it's an S. The Waluder army captured such beasts and tried to train them to serve. But this particular specimen's training has long since ceased. Whether its captor turned Akashic with the rest of their comrades or were eaten by their pet when it broke free from its bonds, we shall never know. All we do know is there is none left alive who knows the words to put an end to its rampage. Only a show of force will suffice. I'm assuming it's that right there. It's another behemoth. Okay, here we go. Final hunt. Oh, and it's the lightning one. Behemoth King! Oh, it's the king. Oh, it's the king. Great. Oh, 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 what the fudge? Well, well, oh, okay.
What the? What the? What the? Woo! Still? Still? Oh! Oh no 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 no! No 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 no! 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 I potion! I potion! I potion! Oh my god! Still doesn't stack up to the main quest one because it was much smaller. That was fun. No match for you, I eh, Torgal. Yep, no match for Torgal. Torgal gets all the pets. All the pets, let me pet you. Can I not pet you here? Treasure hunt. What? You didn't think I were I were just saying th that stuff about hiding my engine, did you? Wouldn't you know? I've already a fine spot picked out and everything. But if you're going going to go on this grand adventure, you'll need to be quick about your business with that ruddy god of yours. Take too long and somebody more clever might beat you to the prize. I suppose in that case, I could bury you one of my lesser inventions. Goddess knows I've countless. Let's do Karen's quest. In case you haven't noticed, your poor hound spends all his time of late on the rear deck whimpering like Gavin his cups. Something ain't right. And my gut tells me it's not to do with this supply of antelope bones. Uh-oh, what's wrong with Torgal? What is it this time, Torgal? <laughs> More than words. More than words. You okay, Torgal? Pining for something, boy. What is it? What do you see out there? I never did ask where you got that anklet of yours. From Sade, that's why. Aww. On the day I brought him home. Of course that it was from ago. Sid. And you're only thinking to ask this now? <sighs> Sid saw that the pup had a habit of gnawing on his leg, since you ask. Oh. Put their iron on him to keep him from doing it. What was wrong, boy? I'll take like as not. Must have been hard on the poor whelp losing his loving masters at such a young age. Doubly hard in being a frost wolf, torn away from his icons and all. Sid would always tell him, you want my iron gone, you find what it is you're looking for. Oh. I reckon what he was looking for was you. I'm sorry, Togo. Sorry for making you wait so long. Oh. Aww. Good Let's boy. get that thing off you. Oh? <laughs> Doesn't sound like he wants it off. <laughs> Indeed. You miss it as much as the rest of us, don't you? Aww. You want me to go with you somewhere? This actual Torgal quest? Quick, aren't you? Glad you've been paying attention. Not nearly as much as you have, Lady Karen. Aye, good thing and all. It's not like Gav would have kept him in nuts and rubbed his belly these past ten summers. <laughs> Your kindness is appreciated. You've been a good friend to him. Only because he doesn't talk back like the rest of you. <laughs> Go on now. I love Karen. Karen's great. Where to then, Toggle? Yeah, where to? Where are we going? All right, Toggle. Where are you taking me? 
I'm going to need a little bit more than that, boy. <laughs> Do you have a better hint for me? Unless you've already given me one. Back on the rear deck, you were looking west toward Rosaria. Mm. Why don't we try the rookery? Okay. I haven't been to the island in almost 20 years. To Port is older then. Fingers crossed the old mooring is still there. Nice. Got a RP walk. Oh. Board Robo. Oh, to an, we're going to an area it's we've never here. been before. After all these years. If I could not turn more than I remember. Back time. Well, because you're not a kid bigger. anymore. You might have to swim, boy. <laughs> I wasn't being serious. <laughs> Toggle's like, you wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare. This place hasn't changed at all. The rookery's right through those trees. Come on. I did all the side quests without Joshua. <laughs> Race you there? I bet I could still beat you. <laughs> Is this his, like, secret hideout? Here we are. This was our hideaway. Wasn't it, Torkel? Aww. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's baby Clive! Coming here helped me to forget who I was. Or wasn't. Prince. Shield. Son his mother could love. Damn. Had I been any one of those things? Perhaps. What is it, boy? Oh? This is all from the castle. Phoenix Gate. Did you bring these here? Oh, his barring sword. Oh, Torgal! <laughs> Torgal, best boy. Well, well. <laughs> you never stopped looking for me, did you, boy? Seriously, best boy. <laughs> Thank you. Talk. For never giving up. For never forgetting. Torgal hella strong. Oh, baby. <laughs> Let's take this with us, shall we? So I don't forget either. Ah, uh, I'm not crying. This is not but a flesh wound. Oh, is there more? How did Torkel get here on his own? Is there more? All right, all right. I'm coming. I think I know where we're going. Oh, where are we going? Wow. Overlooking the city. People Resolve. always talk about the importance of putting the past behind you. But without it, we wouldn't be who we are today. Facts. And we certainly couldn't steer our way to a better tomorrow. Come on, Togo. Let's go home. Aww. It's a cute, cute quest. <sighs> More than words.
More like barks. Charred sparring sword. Clive's old sparring sword. Salvaged by a faithful friend in the aftermath of the Iron Blood invasion 18 winters past. Remember, Clive, your blade is not your only weapon. Rodney Murdoch. Damn. Caval's Fang. Even a legendary king surrounded by the realm's greatest knights and blessed by the very heavens would have found himself hard-pressed to unite the warring tribes of ancient Valisthea. Fortunately, he had the help of his fine and trusty hound, Caval. A fine hound. The two of you have been together for what probably feels like a lifetime now. But there is still a lot that you have to learn about that hound of yours. I, he'd step in front of a bloody raging behemoth if, if it meant protecting you, he did. But that don't mean you should take it for granted. At the end of the day, he's a hound. And sometimes he just wants something to, someone to pat his head and rub his belly and give him a handful of coponuts. You do, you do good to remember that. 